Ready for a digital dive? You're listening to the GZ Chop Shop Podcast, the weekly tech and gaming media podcast that breaks down the latest news, lore, and more. So plug in, because the GZ Chop Shop starts now. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another week of the GZ Chop Shop Podcast. I am your host, Project Itachi, joined by my good friend, co-host, Warners. And today, we have a very special guest. You've heard her iconic voice in games like Metal Gear Solid, Silent Hill, and if you've been to Tokyo and rode the famous Shinkansen Bullet Train, she is the English announcing voice you hear. And today, she is with us to discuss her new venture, Royal Flush. Let's give a warm welcome to the one and only Donna Burke. Welcome to the podcast. This is such an honor. We are so uh, happy to thanks, have you here. Thanks for letting me invite myself. Yeah. Uh, I, can I just give a little story for everyone who's listening? Oh. Um, <clears throat> I started my week checking my emails. I, I was getting on, doing my thing, getting set for the podcast. And in the corner, for anyone who knows, Google will send you notifications in the corner when you get your emails. Now, true story. I had just listened a couple of days before to Sins of the Father. It's on one of my gaming playlists. I just listened to it because I like it. I, I love your, I love the song. And in the corner, it says, email from Donna Burke. <laughs> and I was like... So you're totally getting punked. Yeah, I was like, oh, this must be a different Donna Burke. This can't be the Donna Burke that I just listened to a few days ago. That would be crazy. <laughs> so I look... And lo and behold, it is really her in in our podcast inbox saying, hey, Greg and Daniel. And I was like. You mean, whoa. <laughs> That's what I was so hoping she would do that. that. We can edit that in later. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. I was super pumped. I was like, uh, we're, if, if she wants to talk about the Lou, we can talk about the Lou. Oh, so, put on your mic. <laughs> so we can talk about other stuff as well so yeah oh yeah but you have a new venture that you mentioned and it's called royal flush um i have and um it you know i live in japan i've lived here since 1996 and um so i i get to experience the you know the lovely japanese toilets here which have you guys been to japan we both lived in Japan for a few years, actually. So you know what I'm talking about, right? The um, you go to the to toilet and you can. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can hear that on the. Yeah, we. Oh, we can. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so they, it, to people, people it's who so haven't been to Japan. <laughs> what? What? You were trying to put it away, and it was like. <laughs> like <laughs> still want to turn it off. I know, right? Sometimes, it's funny. Yeah, but sometimes my I yeah. So if, if, you, you, you come to Japan, the to all the public toilets are beautiful and clean. They, they've got seated heat, uh, seat, um, heated seats, and there's this device on nearly every wall in Costco here, everywhere, which can make a water, a, a sound of a flushing toilet or water to cover your plops and splashes and wheeze. And let's face it, some sneaky farts so that the people either side of the stall can't hear you. And it's also in every home, because the Japanese homes are really small, so the toilet's right, right next to where everything's happening. It just gives you privacy, so people can't, ah, I turned your butt. <laughs> you know, there's none of that. So everyone's dignity is, is, is preserved. So here I am, living in Japan, never having anyone hear me fart or anything, and I, le I go overseas, go home, and it's just, a, it's just, I'm I'm horrified. I'm a confident person. So I'm like, if I'm just sort of cringing and thinking, can people hear me? And even, so I was thinking that I've got to make this product available to everyone. And um, so that's what I'm doing. Even though I'm super busy with other projects, I have I just have to do this. You know, actually, I've, I've got something for fans too. If they buy one, I will sign this thing. I don't know if, if are we YouTubing this? Oh, it's going on YouTube. Oh, cool. So you can see this white thing here. There's about, I can write a message to anyone. The catch is they have to buy Royal Flush, but I will, I will write them. So as long as it's not too creepy, 
Um, but then none of the people listening here would ever think to do that. So I, you can, I'm, I, I apologize, right. listeners. Everybody keep clean. Assuming <laughs> that you were, any of you, not any of you were a little bit creepy. So yeah, that's me. So to kind of piggyback off of that, um, I, I don't know, maybe it's as, as we get older, I used to not f feel like that was a valid concern of mine before. But then when I would go out, it seems like, I don't know, maybe it's an age thing that the walls in restrooms just seem to get thinner and thinner and thinner. And With more gaps. There's more gaps. There's too. more gaps. More and gaps, I, especially in America. What's, what, what's with your gaps? I, I wish we knew. I, I wish we knew. Is it a health thing? Health and safety can sort of like... You know, I, when, when, when I had initially gone to Japan, and I, I think Greg would share the same sentiment here, that in itself was a culture shock. And then we stayed there. We were there for a few years. And then we come back, and it felt like an even bigger culture shock coming mm. back to your own culture and going, oh, and then noticing all the issues and mm -hmm. things that are different and kind of annoying. I would and also then say, we become those people who go, well, back in Japan, well, yeah. back in Japan. <laughs> yes, like, I do it all the time, and I don't care, yes. no shame. <laughs> yes. And, and, and the technology that is made over there, we could benefit from. Like, I know some people are probably thinking, like, you know, is that really going to, you know, does that really make a difference? It's, it's a quality of life thing that it's one of those, when you get it, you, you wonder, how did I live without? Yeah, totally, totally. Like how and how did I function is, um, without this? It saves water because um, the, what what we do when you're in a panicky situation like I this happened to me Whole Foods Hawaii 2019. I remember I could pinpoint the day and I'm like oh public toilet no one's here terrific I'm gonna all systems go you know and then you hear oh someone's walked in and suddenly mm -hmm. I'm like oh they're gonna hear everything and so what do I do? I turn around and I waste water, to, but I save my dignity. I do the double flush. Um, yep. Sometimes you can use a, you can rattle the, uh, you know, <laughs> the toilet paper. Just find anything you can. But that's what we do. And so this this device was invented in Japan in in the late eighties to save water because they they had this terrible drought, and so Toto, this very famous um, toilet manufacturer, came up with the idea to um because they were saying save water save water and they noticed in their factory that they weren't saving any water because people still were double flushing they, yeah, invented, they, they yeah. invented that type of toilet because of a drought yeah i never knew that yeah i didn't either <laughs> that's actually like, that's mind-blowing yeah now, when you explain it like that it makes even more sense because yeah you don't realize how much water you're wasting by doing the you know, the double flush and, you know, every time you flush, that's water that's going to your water bill um, or yep. going to the company's water bill, wherever you're, you're doing it. So yeah, yeah, that, no, that makes it, yeah, yeah. that's, that, and I, don't so, know, I went to an all girls school and, you know, let's just say kids can be cruel. And I was probably one of those kids being cruel. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, mm, it was me. Yeah, so in all the toilets in the, in the in the public school toilets here, they're all it's just because it's just culture, and it's part. It's not just also about your dignity. It's also so that you don't make other people listen to you. So it's mm -hmm. a kind of a politeness thing. So out of politeness, I'm going to activate this thing so no one's like going. What the? <laughs> yeah, that falls in line with Japanese culture too. All around yep. politeness, and then saving your dignity. Yeah. So, what, do not disturb your neighbors. That that is the yep yep that is definitely yep. it. So, where can everyone go to get themselves royal flush here in the um, U.S.? They can go to japantoiletsound dot com, and there's free shipping from Japan anywhere in the world. Um, if you need it quick, we can do um, courier shipping for a bit of extra cost. Um, I'm going to sign something. I'm going to say thank you regardless. So even if you don't want, like, I don't want you to signature the signature. I'm going to, I'm going to sign this thing and put it in your, um, put it in the, put it in, in the there anyway. <laughs> yeah. So a little message to you. Saying thanks. Open your toilet. It's a message from Donna Burke. I hope you have a good evening. <laughs> thanks, Donna. Close the toilet. <laughs> Yeah, so remember actually, to hide your flushes. You, <laughs> you guys um, made this funny like Metal Gear flush, and then this morning I was yeah. thinking, 
But isn't Silent Hill like something to do with like, because we're trying to silence our our farts and splashes. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Metal Gear, sil Silent Gear. Can we silent do better? Silent Flush, because technically it's a silent flush. Like this is this is something we're gonna be putting on social. So yeah, we we yeah, how, how, how because we did we got Metal Gear and then you came up with the amazing Royal Gear Flush. Oh well. So that's gonna be the yeah. episode name. Royal Gear Flush. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, people can think of something better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so what I'm do you guys think? Like, what would be making, some good um, some yeah. good uh, some good names for this? Mixing mixing for Donna this, Burke's Royal podcast. Flush. With some of her uh, and also, passworks. Who's the woman on who's doing your voiceover saying, geez, it, you know I'm what? Like, I have the same who question. Aussie? Who the so, hell is I she? I have in... no idea, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to redo this for you. So after the after this we finish shooting, I've got this good microphone. I'm gonna bloody redo your thing for you. Because we don't know who she is. I yeah, I don't know her personally. I actually, you know. Uh, hired someone from Music Radio Creative, which is how I learned how to do a lot of oh. podcasting. But if, okay, but Donna, I would not yeah, turn I, down I, having I think an we introduction from uh, you. I think we need to, you know, it's just out of politeness. I have to offer um, for free, of course. Um, so you, you send me the text, and um, oh, actually, Absolutely. we can record it. We can record it now, later. So is. guys, so, so yeah, basically I'm dissing your introduction and um, <laughs> myself out to do it. Sorry, the, you asked sorry, the question Andrew. I've wondered for a long time, and I just That's kind of just put it. I was like, ah, about. probably friend or something, and he's like, I don't even know who she is. I don't even. I don't even you, know. You don't even know who she is. It was. It was. It was. It was music radio creative. There was a sale, and I was like, hey, <laughs> we need an we intro. We can't get cheated and free, so. Having a have, but having a podcast intro by Donna Burke, yes, a hundred percent. I'm on okay. board. We cool. we're gonna we're gonna connect. We're gonna get. We're we'll gonna make get that to happen. That. Okay. So thank now. you for giving Royal Flush a plug. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, 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 oh, I'm joking. There's a toilet check somewhere. Sorry, I had to say it. it was such a but good let's show. move on to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh dear. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think it was that funny. Um, I, I that probably was, need that to was a good one. That was a good one. Afterwards. I did, yeah. Okay. So, <sighs> getting into the, you're very allowed because you are you you are a woman of many talents. You have done voice acting, singing. You wrote comedy, mm -hmm. and you're an entrepreneur. I am curious, and I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, um, in terms of Metal Gear, because Metal Gear is one of my favorite franchises, and obviously, mm. I already said I loved your song on there. Yeah, that's cool. But you've also said you don't play video games. Yes, I was in the closet for many years, Greg. Um, There's a deep sense of shame and uh, imposter syndrome. <laughs> Uh, I remember at the 2015 games and uh, when Metal Gear Phantom Pain comes out and they're put, getting me up on the console and my character, you know. See, I'm even calling a character that's probably a special name, but I think Ocelot was sort of walking to a wall and like <laughs> shooting his gun into the floor, you know. And it's comedy gold. I should get a Twitch channel just to show how shit I am. But um, am I allowed to stay on this? Sorry. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, and I was I was really ashamed of it. Like, um, <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't keep, I can't find this anymore. So then I just tell everyone it's. And now I think I've got some sort of auditory processing thing. Like, actually, one of my friends is a fantastic jazz player. He can't even watch TV. So it's, it's a feeling of being overwhelmed. Mm. So I get so overwhelmed. So I can watch someone else do it. So mm -hmm. it's not like uh, you know, I could watch you do it and go, yeah, kill him, go on, get him. No, he's behind you. <laughs> it's but, the kind of sign motivation we all need. Yeah, I could, but to actually do it and be the character is is too overwhelming. And yet I can act. It's, I don't know. It's, it's, I can read Game of Thrones, but I can't watch it on TV. It's in all the music and all of the sort of the tension and it's just like yeah, all, the, all the stimuli at once. Yes, it's just too much. So, um, 
So how did you wind up in the gaming industry? Like, how did you wind up with Konami? Well, it was blind luck of living in Japan and lack of competition. So um, if you too had lived in Japan in the late 1990s and early 2000s, there were no Hollywood actors wanting to be in video games. Um, it was really expensive to, there was no uh, internet. Like uh, you can't just drop massive files. There was no, you had to post a, a CD to somebody. So the data was, um, so I think I had that, like, there was probably about 10 people that auditioned and I, I was outstanding out of that 10. <laughs> so it's not like they went to LA and had, no, go, you know, so, okay, let me just say it. I'm incredibly talented. This is, I know, <laughs> I know, but I was also, there was no competition and I, they were like, wow, she's, she's clearly can do this at the at yeah. an adequate level. And uh, that's how I got in. Okay, so uh, we we happened to miss that boat, Daniel. We uh, apparently because <laughs> we 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 didn't get to Japan until two thousand six, and then we were there That's for a not few years. Too bad. Where were we, where in Japan were you? Uh, Sasebo, Sasebo originally, and then we just traveled everywhere. We were so we were in the navy together, and then uh, yeah, and so but our I ship was in port want... most of the time, so we got I to mostly to enjoy Japan. At your Costco, I once judged a talent competition. The Costco base, your Costco or your Yakuda? Oh, Yakuza. Oh, Yakuza. They had a Costco. No, a competition. They they had a, a talent competition. Oh. And you have this in the navy. You have, or in the in the forces, you have this. You um, every moment matters. Like you have a entertainment um organization that does oh, stuff. Oh to... yeah. Yeah, they booked it's, me. It's been a while, and... but I, I I remember. Yeah, yeah. So I missed um, an opportunity. I see. <laughs> that was a big. That was a big culture shock because it's basically like, like going to America, but you're in, it's in Japan. So once I'm you get so through, sorry. The, the, yeah. no, it was great. <laughs> I, I'm, I still have a crock pot that I bought illegally because of what? my friend. <laughs> I went to the. I went to the to the shops, which are clearly not for Australian visitors. And I'm like, oh, that looks good. And my friend, American friend, said, oh, I'll just buy it for you. So yeah. That's how we cool. do business. Yeah, so you're in the Navy. <laughs> cool. Oh, I love it. So yeah, you are living both of our dreams by living there now. And you've been living there since 1996. 1996. Yeah. Okay. What, what happened to, to get, yeah. like, like, how did that happen? Well, I was 31. I um, had been teaching high school in Perth, where I'm from. and. I was just, I'd always wanted to be a singer and actor. I was, but all I got to do was sing at funerals and weddings and, um, you know, my dream of being in Hollywood or anything like that, it just was died because, you know, I was so old. And so um, I, I got to, in Australia, we have this, we have really, sorry to people who don't have this, but we have this, you know, medical, medical free medical care and you have this thing called long service leave, which free believe it or not, care been working for something for 10 years they give you money for three months or so I was traveling and I just thought I don't want to go back to Australia because I know exactly exactly what my life will be so I took the ch I got a job in Japan I was in London I got a job in Japan never was interested in Japan and I actually think that's a good thing because it's not like I had this big dream and this fantasy because I know some people do come to Japan and then they get really disappointed and so coming Coming and living here, I had no, I felt like a kid. Like I d didn't know anything. I didn't know anyone. And it's like your whole life restarts and no one knows who you are. They're not like, you're, you're you, you, Donna, you're Kathy Burke's sister, right? Like, oh, it's, I've got two older sisters. I was always relate. Oh, you're so and so sister. Or you're so. Here, like, America Jindeska. I'm like, piss off. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm Australian. Uh, Russia, Jen, are you Russian? Are you American? And it's like, it's, it's I'm like. picturing that dynamic in my head. Cause I know what it looks like. Cause I've, I've been to Australia 
I've been in Japan. That that's just there's a picture that's painted for me right now that is so yeah, funny. I love it when they get in a taxi and they say, "Ah, oh, America, Jin, are you American or are you Russian?" Because you know clearly I look like a, a high class prostitute on to, on on a on my way to a job, which is another story. Because <laughs> I was once offered a job as a prostitute in Japan. Wait, what? I was like thirty two. I was like. I'm kind of flattered. I'm kind of flattered. And I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm outraged. I'm outraged. And I'm yet, flattered, but how dare I'm you? Flattered. I mean, clearly you think, oh, oh, God. Anyway, so um, I love to do that with a taxi driver. I said, oh, are you from Korea? Oh, no, 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 I'm from Japan. Or are you are you Chinese? Oh, no, no, no. I'm like, you know, like, stop, stop just painting all white people as they're Americans. Anyway, that's my that's my rant. Um, so <laughs> I can't even remember what the question is. <laughs> we were we were wondering how you wound up in in Japan. Yeah, so boredom with my hometown. Uh, why not go there? And once I got here, I started getting really high class, um, not prostitution jobs, high class jobs, <laughs> jobs, singing, singing for events, and then singing for TV commercials. And they just literally give you a thousand dollars cash. And so, so from being a broke teacher, I suddenly was making a lot of money. And I was 32, 34, three. I was old enough to realize, oh my God, this is. If you can just turn up on time and they, I think there's been so many flakes that have come through Japan or, and I have seen people behave very badly, like I'm eating this rubbish and, you know, just, just be very difficult. So if you're just pleasant, they just put you, oh my goodness, we'll ask Donna to do anything, you know, because she, she's so versatile. She says, yes, she's always pleasant. Um, and then if you don't like the job, you can just, oh, sorry, I'm busy. You know, so you, it was it was perfect. So I just um, knew how lucky I was, knew that I was getting these incredible opportunities. And, you know, Yoko Kano, working with her in 2001 on, um, you know, I'm, I'm in a singing live with a symphony orchestra in one of the most beautiful studios next to Tokyo Tower. I've got chills now thinking about it. And I just, this is like my dream has come true. And that's how I feel about Japan. It just made all my dreams come true. How long, did, that, how long did it take how... you to get uh, like adequated and, and pick up enough of the language to kind uh, of feel well, like it's home? I never, pick, I never picked up enough of the language and I'm not, I, I'm again, I used to be ashamed, but I, I just don't speak Japanese. I think I speak Japanese. If you can't speak Japanese, you'd be like, whoa, that basically I'm saying this food delicious is not yes more beer please <laughs> well, lovely like weather isn't it? And, and so the japanese who uh, who don't know that, that i've lived here for 27 years are like oh my god you are a genius at speaking japanese but um i just have enough to get by my husband's um from england he's he's fluent i used to have a you know all my staff were bilingual and actually back in the day even if even when, whenever I tried to speak Japanese in a in a job, the agents were like, "Don't speak Japanese. Don't speak Japanese. We want it to look like we've flown you in, and that you're very expensive. So if you start speaking Japanese, they're just going to think you're some local English teacher that we picked up. So you're degrading your value by when you speak Japanese. So it was, it was highly discouraged. Yeah. Wow. From you know, yeah. from a business standpoint, from a business though, standpoint, though, I I, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. But yeah, you, know, but to kind of piggyback off what you said before, and I, I'm guessing this still holds true because I remember living in Japan. You didn't need to know the language; you just needed to know a little bit to get by, because yeah. a large amount of the population speaks English. Fairly, that is absolutely like, okay. not true. No, Daniel, they don't. They really don't. Just in the couple of cities we were in, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we kind of got um, kind of got lucky. And maybe you had people come. Well, and we were in like naval. You. You could speak we were like Japanese. In, can I speak Japanese? Oh no, I. No, maybe. It's been years maybe since two I... attractive guys. You attracted women 
from men who could speak Japanese, who speak English, and they'll come up to you like, oh, especially if you were in cities where there weren't many um, foreigners, they, they would probably come to you like, hello, and they want to practice their English. Yeah, there was a lot. I guess like from that perspective, yeah. yeah. And we lived like the, the areas we were at, I feel like maybe had more people that would be in a position to have to speak more English, I guess. Like naval yeah. naval bases and cities and stuff close yeah. to that. And they probably that yeah, they they that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, now they can speak you know, to to work on a American base it, it helps to have English, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. pretty much that helped guide you to the to your other to your other jobs like working with Silent Hill and um actually yeah. in an anime too, which I I did not I did not know. Which, oh, um, magical, magical lyrical. lyrical? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that but, was surprising know, that, that, for me. I, I mean, I never seen that you one. Know but... that, you know that one? Okay, because I didn't know it was that famous. I yeah. we, we love anime. <laughs> we're we're, we're anime fans. So you know, as as I was uh, diving in and 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 doing more, you know, more research because I was like, okay, you know, I I knew about. The, the music you did and i knew that you were in games and then i was like wait hold on and it was like yeah she was she was an anime she was she was a magical lyrical and i'm like hold on <laughs> i was like did she... you see tokyo ghoul yes glassy sky yeah that song has been like yeah what a what a beautiful song that 2015 sins of the father came out and that song came out and just I love it. I, I, the anime was too. The anime's too scary for me to watch. I tried to watch it, and I was just, oh my god! You know, That's, I'm basically a wimp. Tying into into that, you know how like a lot of actors and actresses they say they don't watch their own work. You know. They'll... Oh God! If I could watch myself, I'd be watching myself. myself. I can't get enough of watching myself, listening <laughs> to myself. No, I don't. I'm not one of those people. I, um, I've done a lot of improv. And I think that just made me really um, chill. Like, like, yes, you could do a better take. You know, I do a lot of jazz. You know, every, every sure next time you could have done it better, but who cares? You know, I'm not too. I'm not no, too a, uh, I think that's a good a good way to be because then you just drive yourself insane. You're trying to, you know, it's you're always trying to attain perfection. And then it's always just out of reach, and you're like, "Oh, if I had sung that note just a little higher, or this one a little lower, and it'd probably could drive you insane." And, you know, yeah. yeah, and not be, it also it, it it concentrates the attention away from being like, "How cool that I got that gig, and I did the best." And a lot of it it can be from a directorial point of view. So whenever I see a performance on film or TV um, that I don't like, I think oh, probably because the director told them to do it, so the the, the actor had no control. Like the, the actor, top, the director said to do it that way. So, yeah. And the other thing about being in this business is if you can't collaborate and if you can't be sort of like, oh, well, you know, there'll be other jobs. If you're like, this is my, and I have worked with people like that and they are not in the business anymore because they're freaking assholes that are, uh, they're no fun. They just, I remember being with this bloke, oh, let's just call him Dennis. His name is actually Dennis, but he probably not listened to his podcast. <laughs> um, and we're at this this recording studio. He's written the lyrics for some I don't know orange juice, and I'm singing I'm singing the things. And the the, the director comes in, and this guy, the Japanese guy Watanabe San, he's worked with everybody, and he's just being polite when he says, "Oh, could, you know, is it possible to change the lyrics?" He's not saying he's not actually asking him. And so Dennis, Dennis the menace goes, no, but these these are my words. These are, and I thought he was joking. So I'm, I'm like, oh, my God. oh boy, he's not joking. And so when Watanabe San goes, I'm like, Dennis, who cares? Just change the lyrics. He goes, but this is my legacy. And I'm like, no, it's not. You didn't pay for the studio. You didn't pay for the orange juice. You're just just writing lyrics, mate. You know, like loosen up. And he was. You know, those people exist in the world you, and they don't go far. It's because they're, you know. So it's okay to be passionate about your work, but there's a certain level of passion. 
Like, is that is that being passionate? It's not your work. It's the, the client. The, the the client is the person. And because I, I said actually, what I said is this: it's not your CD. If this was your CD and you're paying for the studio and you're paying for the musicians, go go at it. It's your work. It's not. But it's it's you, you just it's it's a TV commercial. It's not your CD. Um, yeah. But I understand you still. <laughs> that, that, that does seem pretty bad to like lose it all because you didn't want to change the lyrics for orange juice. It's my, it's my art, and it's like, nah, mate, if, nah, you're taking yourself way too seriously. Um, yeah, so I think that that's um. Actually, we're all thinking now, Greg, that you'll probably be the, be the person. You're like, actually, Dennis has got a point here. I mean, <laughs> I will say this. <laughs> Greg is the more, how, how will I put this? When it comes to business things, Greg is more of the tight ass than I am. Great guy. <laughs> but I'll be the one that kind of like make jokes and stuff. And then he'll laugh. But like he, he levels me out to keep me as serious as I need to be. But I bring him down a notch when he's being a little too serious. I was telling, oh, wow. I was telling Daniel that when you and I were exchanging the emails to set up the show, Donna. I was like, I can't, I was super professional. At least tried to be as close to professional as I could be with the emails. And Donna was like, cool. Awesome. Sounds great. And I was just like, yeah, he, basically hmm. he's writing like 10 page emails and I'm like, well, hey, actually, yeah, he, he was I'll trying to be real, <laughs> he was being yeah. a little professional and then he showed me yours and I was like, oh, she seems really laid back. And he's like, yeah, this is the kind of email you'd write because <laughs> I don't really write <laughs> like super professional. There's, I'm, I like to be. Casual. Yeah, I, I, I like, I like that. Everyone, some, um, have you done that disc profile? Like, I think some people are really, um, and I'm sure you've had guests not turn up because you weren't clear and yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's just it, like I say, you know, working with Daniel, it 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 he helps keep me leveled out um for for those reasons. I don't know when the you know, I became more serious. I think when I was younger, I was a little bit more carefree, but I wound up around people who were always like, "Oh my gosh, you got to grow up. You got to be serious. The world's not a kind place." And it started like <laughs> It started like tightening me up. I'm like, all right, well, that's what everyone's saying. I, 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 I laugh too much. I talk too much. I'm having too much fun. Time to, and now that I am, everyone's like, you know, you should really loosen up a bit. Yeah. And then I joined so, the military. What, Go what's fish. Your, what, what do you, what do you, what do you do? Like, what's your day jobs? Like, are you, uh, are you running studio? Like. I can well, see some plushies behind Greg. Um, he, he makes plushies. I think plushies. Yeah. So I, you know, now that I'm a veteran, I have, thankfully, um, due to my career, I have the resources to do this oh, podcast. Oh, trust so, fund babies. you military f trust fund babies. Oh, trust fund babies. I'm definitely not trust fund. <laughs> I wish. You know, like <laughs> when you do enough years of service, you have some sort of um, stipend, right? If you retire, you, I you get VA longer. benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that part's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. But yeah. But yeah. Uh, it's, it's not guaranteed to everyone because you know. So, do you find that Metal Gear really relate? You really relate to the whole sort of war bit? Oh, the missing not, limbs. No. No. Maybe not. Not for. What I don't know. We, we were, were doing, talking thankfully. about Stand and Watch earlier, and how dangerous that is. That might yeah, fall stand, under stand missing limbs. Dangerous. For all the wrong reasons, we were upon a, we were talking about earlier having to stay on watch on the outside of the ship during like major oh. storms in the middle of the ocean, oh. and, and how they would do everything possible except for bring you inside the ship <laughs> and then call it safety. It was a it was a moment we were just we were laughing about because they used to oh, like oh put this harness up to you. <laughs> we were laughing about falling off the front and hanging yeah, just hanging the, off the side yeah, of the ship. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> But uh, Greg's, uh, Greg's a business owner, and uh, he pulled me into his business a few years ago. And oh, it's fun. been it's been very uh, uh, good for me as far as uh, like maybe communication skills and meeting new people and stuff. And that's been really great. Uh, and then I work at uh, on the ICU here in Texas. I'm an ICU nurse. 
Wow. So, cool. So. My friend here, she has a, a charity where dogs are allowed into the ICU of a children's hospital mm -hmm. with a nurse handler and can get on the bed. A dog. I've seen it happen. It's amazing. And, you know, especially for the child's, you know, last moments, mm -hmm. it can really comfort the family. But also it can actually help them recover. I was, yeah. just, thinking, I was just thinking that. Yeah. Now, th thankfully for me, like, I, I don't work with children, and I am happy I don't because I, I couldn't. Like, that. that's a whole other specialty that I could never do. So mm. my demographics is just very sick adults, whatever that sickness is. Does it make you want to live a healthy lifestyle or are you looking, you seeing sick adults in there like, well, that's just bad luck. And there's no <laughs> amount of granola is going to fix it. You know, does, prevent that. It does because if I'm speaking candidly, there's a large amount of things that put people in hospitals that could have been probably prevented if we just took better care of ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, the Japanese are really good. Like, you'll have a slight tummy thing and they'll. They'll be like, wow, you need to really uh, lo lose that because you could be in danger of <laughs> meta metabolic syndrome. And you're like, what's that? That's a pre, 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 precursor to, a, you know, a possible diabetic two, you know, like they are on top of it. <laughs> it's, oh, wow. it's not like. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they don't play over there. I, I really miss it. It's been so long since I've been over there and I've wondered how, how much it's probably changed over the past several years. One thing I've noticed when I go to the post office um, now, g the women working there have nail art and they have dyed hair. So before there was so yeah, used rigid to be uniform. about, oh, they're still wearing a uniform, but they're, 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 there's so many people who, like <laughs> this huge section of population who basically were unemployable because they dyed their hair or they had nail art or they had a tattoo. And now Japan is so desperate for um, workers that they're, um, they're sort of, you know, this rigid rigidity about you need to look a certain way, your hair needs to be a certain length, like, a, like an air hostess in the you know, 60s. Mm -hmm. They're just saying, you know, it's fine, you can. Yeah, so it's, it's becoming appearance-wise less, um, there's heaps of people with dyed hair and, um, yeah, it's good. They're loosening up a bit. It is on my wish list to move permanently like you to Japan um, in the future. Uh, that's currently, what, that's currently, I think, honestly, Dan, I think what you're, you're, is that one of your goals too? Like, pretty sure we all agree we should just like all move to it's Japan. A, it's a 10 year a goal I have for myself. Interesting. It's a really, I, as someone, I I love living here. It's as a woman, I could walk out my front door at two a.m. and and walk to Shinjuku, and or walk anywhere, go down all sorts of back alleys, and never once think, "Wow, this is super dangerous of me." And there'll be women on their phones, not paying any attention, just like walking around. Um, so, you know, it's so well lit. Um. It's just, a, it's just people are proud to do work. Like, you know, you get on the bus and the bus driver is really proudly driving the bus and they've got, the, you know, like I'm a bus driver. I work. It's just, it's, it's, it's very lovely, comfortable place to live. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a very uh, different, different culture for sure. Um, my girlfriend, she actually just came back from Japan last month. And she was like, I'm homesick. And I'm like, you were only there for like Aww. two weeks. And she was like, I want to go back. I, yeah. And I was like, I, I told yeah. her, I, was like, I, I know what you mean. I, and yep. I knew that was going to happen. And I do not blame you. Um, so maybe one day we'll all get to get to go back over there. But speaking still on Japan, the train. How did you nail now, that? Now, you would have gig? heard me because I was doing that since 2003. So if you guys ever jumped on the Shinky. Back then, when you were in Japan living, you would have heard me. Did you ever go on the I didn't train? get to. My girlfriend did. Aww. My girlfriend did. Because when I told her that I was having an interview with you, 
she was like, you know, she wasn't familiar with the work because, you know, she wasn't she wasn't as in, involved in, in, in video games and, and such. She's but like I was me. Like, she doesn't play video games. Yeah. Like she plays them passively with me. Oh. But then when oh. I mentioned, you know, on her trip, I was like, you were on the bullet train, right? She was like, yeah. I was like, the English voice. She was like, oh, really? <laughs> and I was like, there you go. Thing. It's so that's the most famous thing I've done. So, like, um, right now I'm, I've uh, also got a new career as a writer. And, um, yeah, when I'm in meetings and pitching TV shows and stuff, it's like everyone's like, that, that's the biggest thing I've ever done. So, how did, how did you get job. into that? Well, I, as a, they, they were looking for someone who could imitate the woman who did it before, who was a Canadian who was imitating the woman who was a British woman. So like a pretty okay British accent, but a bit. And I, I had to uh, copy exactly um, the way they, this woman did it. So it's mimicking. And again, here, here's the thing. There would have been people who are like, no, I don't like it that way. Because my head was like, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Shinkansen. This is an Ozomi Super Express. Well, I wouldn't have done it in that particular intonation because this is not exactly how I would do it. But that, so I, I imagine there was lots of voice actors who went in there and just said, oh, this is so lame. I want to do it this way. Mm. And they're, all the executives just said, "Get you know, we want, to, and they're thinking, the Japanese, we don't want to, bump them into a new way. They've been listening to this for 20 years, since 19, or whatever, since 1964. We just want to have exactly the same. So I was like, sure, I can do it exactly the same, even though it sounds lame. <laughs> but now I've been doing it for 20 years. I can't not do it in that voice. But um, so we had to, and they wanted someone who lived there long term. So the, the Canadian woman was going back to Canada and she was like, oh, let's come back to recordings. I'm like, no, we want someone who lives here long term. So every year when when we invent Wi Fi, she can do the Wi Fi. When we invent terrorism, some bloke um lit <laughs> himself a light on a on a shinkansen. <laughs> well, we can just have the we can have the, the voiceover updated like that. When we invent mass tourism and you know, tourists have got all this luggage. Yeah, so that's so now the the announcement just goes on and on. Like you I'm you're practically in Nagoya by the time I finish. Yeah. Wow. And it, 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 again, it was it it's it, it was a difficult recording. It was everyone was smoking. It was two thousand two, two thousand three. Um, the director and the was was not easy to work with, and really, really um, misogynistic and um, patronizing and played a lot of power games so something it should have just taken i don't know five hours to record took you know 15 so again just like an acting this is just acting performance just act act like you don't you know act just act and then yeah it was tough but now um i've been i've, I've been doing it and the, the, every year a tv show here will get me to come on and say who is this voice and i'll you know, do the voice and yeah, it's been really good. I got the I got the Metal Gear Solid um iDroid voice because of the Shinkansen. So I was on a Kojima reports um interview with uh, Kojima and um oh who was the person? This was a nice guy, but and they were saying, Can you do that voice? Is that can you do the Shinky voice for something else? I'm like, Yeah, it's my voice and they you could just see them ding 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 ding, the lights going off. And then they asked me to be the iDroid you know, system voice, you doing the Shinky voice. And then they had all these Easter eggs for the Japanese where I'm doing the Shinkansen voice and um, because for the Japanese, that, that they, you know, they all hear me as well. So, so they, like people, people scream and cry when I do the voice here, Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Once I was sitting at having pizza with a, a friend who also um, does, he does the track announcements. So, you know, the, the, so you're in the train, I do the voice, but there's a person who says, you know, track on track five. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, bound for blah, blah, blah. That's my best friend. So we're sitting in this, um, you know, in the boonies having pizza. And then these t two Japanese men came up and said, are you Donna Bach? And I said, yeah. And um, 
oh my god and they're just like ah! and uh because we thought it was you but then i didn't want to but then we couldn't understand why you would be in this pizza restaurant we just and it was so cute yeah I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I know Daniel won't tell you, but he was he was fanning out when I said, "Hey, you know, uh, Donna Burke's going to be on the show," and he was. It was like a pause. And he was like, "No way, Z Donna Burke." She's begging to be on the show. She's got. She's hawking some product. I had to process she came to it. Me. I had to. Process I, I said. It. I showed him the message, and and I was like, at first, before I had you know wrote you back i was like no, I, I, I said verify it's real verify it's real because <laughs> <Stop, Verify stop. laughs> <Verify. laughs> my first thought was that's not real i was like you know what i just got i just got a similar email from royal albert hall which is this really famous place in london and they were asking me about metal gear in concert and i did the same thing like <gasps> what hall is it real i need to verify this is some someone's you know um so yeah i i totally get it metal gear that's it metal gear did you concert. see the, the video of of cynthia singing uh cynthia singing snake eater mm -mm, i haven't seen that oh okay so um there's this this off there's this journalist called ash bar ash barty now that's the tennis player ash <laughs> anyway her name's ash american um, and she did a big deep dive story on Cynthia Harrell, like where is she? She sang Snake Eater, you know, what's happened? So she, tra she tracked her down. And that was in 2020. And so when we got, I got the call to do Metal Gear in concert in Tokyo last year during Tokyo Game Week, I'm like, oh, it would be so great if we got Cynthia on, you know, Cynthia Harrell. You, I mean, I can get her on the show. She's, she's really lovely if you want. Um, She's um anyway, so I got in contact with her and uh she she came to Tokyo first time since she'd come to record Snake Eater with um Oh no, she didn't record she recalled that in LA, but anyway, she came here for the game show back in, you know, I don't know, nineteen ninety nine and so yeah, she came and sang um Snake Eater for the first time ever. Oh wow. And uh I just I just popped her up on my YouTube but I was I was crying my eyes out. It was it's so. I bet seeing that live lovely. was something else. I bet that was pretty amazing to see that. Yeah, it sold, that live. The, the show sold out. Like wow. it, ever, because it's like history making, and yeah. um, you know. But maybe maybe in a few years, people will be like this could be the last Metal Gear in concert ever because Donna Burke's so old. <laughs> Um, you know, I'll probably have a great career for twenty I'll, years. I'll be sure I to see <laughs> one before you retire. Then, okay. <laughs> That's a goal now. Yep, it's a goal now. Yeah. Though. You gotta let you have to, to see let it. us know, like guys. I'm uh, thinking about retiring, so then we can be like, okay, we need to go to the. We gotta get to the next Metal Gear in, in concert. We gotta. Isn't that what Sher did? Like to, you know, Elton John, they sort of like, I'm retiring, and then like two years later, I'm back. Yep, <laughs> and then two years later, I'm retiring again. I'm. This is. Um, you know, guys, I'm done. I'm done. And you're like, yeah. Speaking of uh, retiring, um. Do you see yourself doing this, all of no. this? For... <laughs> She's like, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> I retired during, like, COVID was so, was my retirement. I made sourdough bread. I've got a lovely sesame biscuit, you know. I was, I read every book that I ever wanted to. I got into the garden and I'm like, right, I'm done. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> I now know what it's like to be retired. Super boring. I've got mild depression, and <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah, no, I will not. <laughs> you took a detour I mean, and said, I'm think, retiring now. Yeah, I think if you, I get it if you're doing a job that's not fun. Mm. I get that. I really get that. And I think, yeah, retire. But my job's super fun. So, um, and being entrepreneurial, like with Royal Flush, I'm so busy. And for 10 years, like, no, I'm too busy. I can't do it. But then it's just, it was this last trip back to Australia last year. It was just like, for goodness sakes, why don't they have this? Oh. So, yeah. We got to push didn't want this to be promo for Get it out there. Yeah, I didn't want to be one of those people who's like, like, oh, I had that idea. Oh, yeah, I had that. You know. Because I actually have this other product, which is a heat pad that I export from Japan, which, which, hot, hot um, right? hot, hot hotties, hotties, yeah, hotties, hotties, 
Yeah. Um, and it's so many people have said to me, I had that idea. I had that idea, but they just didn't do anything with it. Mm. But the thing with, with the thing with this royal flush, it really people are like, what? It, it's they don't know they need it until you've come to Japan and really had that lovely toilet experience. Um, yeah, and some people have said to me, I don't. When I use it, my kids going, "Mom's doing a poo." <laughs> so. <laughs> She goes, the kids love it. The kids love it, but I don't really want to use it because basically I'm announcing to the whole house that I'm about to shart. <laughs> I mean, the sound that it would, you know, if you didn't have it still is announcing to the house. It's just announcing in the in the moment. At least Royal Flush removes the hat. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And actually one of my friends, he is a loud peer. And I have a toilet a right next peer. to my living room. And every time he'd go in there, I'd be like, oh, so I, yeah, I'm like, you know, so. It's the Royal Flush. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. No one wants to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question um, sure. about being in concerts in general. Yeah. And you said you and mm. you were in Metal Gear in concert and it was sold out. What kind of feeling do you get when you're performing like in a concert like that? It's a drug. And I want more of it. It is. It is. So the first time I did it in um, uh, the the world premiere was in Osaka. I did not realize the body, like the rehearsal, rehearsal. Oh, yeah, I'm nervous. I'm quite nervous. But when I got out on stage, the adrenaline rush and the the the, the, the absolute sins of the father is just like, oh, I've got it. <laughs> And my legs are going, what the actual fuck? We didn't cross this. <laughs> you're going down. You're going down. No, no. My brain is like, yes. oh. and as soon as I finish, my leg, I was like, I've got to hit the gym because it <laughs> is, you cannot predict. You cannot predict what you're going to do in a, with an audience who have spent money, who are all like this amazing um, symphonic. Music. I think that's the thing about AI. I mean, the, the symphonic orchestra, 70 people bashing on things and doing, and all these sound waves are traveling out and literally going through your body and touching you in a, in a sub, uh, you know, in a, it, on an incredibly subconscious level mm. that you can't express. And so, I think singing in a, with the symphonic the symphony orchestra is just like one of the most incredible feelings, and I, I, I just can't wait to do it again. In fact, it, it's it changed my brain so that other performing is like like before I you know, just sing with a backing track, sing 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 sins of the father or um, when heavens divide or glassy sky with a backing track is so boring to not have musicians behind you. Just to have, you know, something coming out of a speaker. Yeah. There is something magical about the the group um creating something right there and and the and the possibility that someone's gonna stuff up the guitar solo <laughs> in when heaven's divide. Like a few times I've been oh, they did not nail that. Anyway. You know, yeah. that, that, that sounds amazing. Cause like, as you're describing, I'm like trying to, you know, picture it. And the closest I can get to how feeling the instruments resonate through you was like, my girlfriend took me to a candlelight orchestra. So, mm -hmm. and it was for, like a keeper. Yeah, she, she, she is a keeper and it was for Hayao Miyazaki. It was like a Hayao Miyazaki tribute. So it was all the songs from his movies. And yep. I heard, I heard them, you know, in the movies and I'm like, oh, that, that's great. But then when I was there and hearing them from the instruments, I was just like, whoa, like, like I actually started tearing up for some of them. And it was just mm. something like I, like I resonated with the music differently yeah. than when I hear it through the TV or through yeah, my game. Yeah. Or speakers. Yeah. 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 So totally. I, I, I can, I, I kind of understand what you, what you mean on on that and i could tell like from your video like you know the picture i could just see that's why i had to ask like what's it like because i could just see like oh, the man. way you were just 
belting out those tones. I was like, I feel it. I feel it's like a, it's like a collective. I mean, I've not been in a war situation. I can't even bear to watch a war movie because it's just too real. And so I really channel a lot of sort of sort of sadness and 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 whatever. So I really feel it when I sing it. And um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I'd love to. I'm so excited that Metal Gear is releasing um, Delta. Yes. Um, the Delta will come out a whole new generation. Um, it's it's like that that knowledge that the middle the middle gear well, after I did Phantom Pain dun, 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 mm-hmm. and I've yeah. worked to a few mm-hmm. orchestras. Yeah, it's pretty niche. It's but now it'll be it'll have the oldies who played it, you know, and it's going to have all the young younger uh, people. So I, that's really exciting, knowing that it's 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 going to be on the on the way up, and then they're going to probably redo. Um, Peace Walker and When Heavens Divide. So, I mean, what a thrill. Ha ha. We can't turn that into a toilet joke. But anyway, <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's such a great, I mean, who, who would have known that I, that this would turn into such an incredible gift for my career? Like, um, and to do, to, to be able to, to know, to know that I will tour the United States. I, it will happen. I, there will be a Metal Gear concert in Texas one day, um, and it won't be a hard sell. It won't be, you know, up until now. It's the, you know, it's a big risk. Mm-hmm. Are people gonna do enough? Are there enough fans of this? Yeah, I think you'd be surprised. I, yeah, I, I could see that being sold out easily. Um, yeah, closet closet I think it's, fans yeah. would come out of the closet in droves for sure. Um, yeah. So are you going to be, are you going to be on Delta? Are you going to be, are you going to be working on Delta? No, I'm not in Delta because that's a remake of um, a game that was, I didn't come into Metal Gear until 20, 2009. So no, I'm not, I'm not in it. Um, that's uh, Cynthia, Cynthia's Snake Eater. Oh, okay. Is okay. the song for that. Okay. Can we, mm. gonna, gonna have to. So is it, it's just a remake, right? It's just like a zhuzhed up yeah. version. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so no, I'm not in that. Um, uh, you'll have to wait probably to 2028. Yeah, I, I, was, gonna, I was just thinking, I'm I said, that's okay. We're remakes, we're doing remakes all the time, so the, yeah. <laughs> you'll be back. <laughs> They've been remaking yeah, a lot of I'll games be, lately, and, and up in the graphics and everything, and the story's just, I don't know, like everything just looks even more amazing than I remember it. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm for mm. all these remakes. Yeah, I mean they do it with Bond, the the Bond franchise. Um, but in, because it's video games, you can just you don't have to get different actors. You mm-hmm. can just um, mm-hmm. you know make them look gorgeous and cool. Yeah, make them look awesome. Yeah, I, I my dream would be to sing for the Metal Gear movie. Yeah, when they make that, as long Matter as they do time. it right. Matter of time. Oops. As long as they do it right, I won't have complaints. <laughs> so I, ask. Yeah, I think this i think uh i think they'd probably do it right i mean m- knowing the fandom um did yeah. you watch the last of us on telly yes oh i loved it i loved i mean loved i did not so play much. the game but i just loved and i loved that actress i saw her in um bella she was in um the game of thrones this, oh no, I I can't watch Game of Thrones, but she was in this other show. Um, it's based on the Golden Compass. Um, I think it was called the Northern Lights, and it was starred. Mm. It was on HBO, and she played this very. And that was the first time I'd seen her. I didn't because I didn't see her in Game of Thrones. Who was she in Game of Thrones? Oh, uh, I just remember the. I, I don't know her name. I like the face. She ruled, I, I she ruled one of the houses. Yeah, I just don't remember yeah, the, the she house. She just had such a really great sort of um you just can't take your eyes off her she's mm-hmm. just so watchable mm-hmm. yeah. um, she yeah. she did ellie justice for sure i know a lot of people were wary mainly because and the problem is a lot of people were like why can't they find someone that looks exactly like ellie and i'm like no as long as they can convey the the, the emotion and who those per- that person is that's all that matters and as far as i'm concerned she nailed it her yeah, and pedro they cool. nailed those roles it, I, I thought the 
the way they took the they stayed fairly like pretty true to the game itself but then they capitalized off certain characters and it like evolved the story from the game and i loved it mm, i loved it. it they did a great job expanding on characters and telling their stories yeah craig mason um, are you, did you watch Fallout on television, on yes. Amazon? Yes. So I, I, we, we again, I don't play the game, but I loved it. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't watched it yet. Well, and I think, I think that's the, the, the shows that are based off video games now that are successful. It feels like they're successful because they're able to find that middle ground between what the fans want and mm -hmm. what appeals to everyone and tell a good story. I, th I think these studios are starting to get a hang of it now because they're they're starting to get more successful. Yeah, I think it's, it's you know tell a good story. Mm -hmm. That that's it, isn't it? And it's not. Um, yeah, that's all we and actually make you want. Care about the characters, like like I, I really, you, you know, when you really care, even even the the villains are, are you care about them. I think that's the the that's that's yeah that's I'm, I'm actually writing a couple of tv shows at the moment so yeah and that's be my seeing new some, career some that's shows me. rolling I, out from donna burke you're gonna be seeing some shows roll out from you yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, that's the plan that's uh you know like i basically if you know taught myself screenwriting because during covid because i was bored um and um not actually that's not true i'm bored but thought oh how hard can it be <laughs> <laughs> I, i've nailed the sourdough i'm sure there's a book on this what else can i master <laughs> makes one loaf of bread like i can I got do anything this. <laughs> easy no, seriously that that's just that is so me like oh how no business experience i'm just gonna you know yeah i'm gonna make a tv show um, but you yeah. know it's like when i was a school teacher i was just one page ahead of the kids Miss, miss. There's a secret. Um, um, <laughs> I'm mad that took me a like, second like, to get. I was like, oh. <laughs> I always yeah. knew they weren't that far ahead. Yeah. How hard can it be? But, you know, the, to well, be fair, I, I, I appreciate that mentality because that's how I went into podcasting. I didn't go to school. I didn't know anything. I, I, was, I just, I talked about it with my, my buddy Ty. We were literally fun fact. This show was born in a, <laughs> in a in a strip club. We were just sitting around having a conversation. Yeah, we no, weren't paying attention to strippers. Strip we were busy talking about starting a podcast. This. I'd like to point out, I was not there for this. I didn't come <laughs> till years later. What makes someone go? You know what? I feel like I feel like we could go axe throwing. We could go oh, um, on a water slide. No, let's go to a strip club. What let's makes you club. do that? Start a start a podcast. Is it, is it is it just is it? I don't know. I watched Sopranos. I couldn't follow this. I'm like, look at the boobs on that one. She I wonder what she does. Oh, you know, like oh, I'm so distracted by the boobs. So, yeah, that anyway. was that. A lot of people don't believe it, but I tell them they're like, you know, how did you come up with the idea of the Jeezy Chop Shop? And I was like, it, it was born in a strip club, and they're like. Wow. As I was putting, putting a dollar note into someone's undies, I just had a, a light went off. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't that what you do? You put. Oh. <clears throat> I haven't been in oh, years. You got laugh. I don't. I don't miss it. Um. We 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 don't have those really <clears throat> in Australia. We have something worse. <clears throat> worse. We have these things called skimpy bars, where in order to buy a drink, you go up to the to the the bar staff is a woman who's topless and she's and she and she hello i'm like oh she's got nipples <laughs> um, oh, what was i gonna say um 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 uh, yeah yeah I, so well i'm not saying we don't have uh but it's kind of unavoidable you go into the, you go into the bar and you're like oh it's it's a skimpy bar yeah she has nipples <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I yes. did enough people interaction at home. Or not at home. <laughs> what? At, at the hospital. <laughs> Explain more. What <laughs> naked people? Yes, tell us more. Daniel, Daniel. This is not sounding good, mate. So we, you need uh, to walk that comment back. 
you you've talked to me long enough now it only took an hour for me to start twisting up my words <laughs> I, yeah. and saying shit on accident that has nothing to do with anything i'm talking about i am the king at Dr. it daniel at work topless no. going into you know in the ice with with pasties on his nipple saying I hope this makes you feel better. <laughs> they've done some research out of Sweden that says, you know, topless n male nurses can really. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. I could see Daniel. Because oh, at first I asked him, I said, hey, do you want to do the intro for, for Donna? And he was like, nope. He was like, mm mm, because I don't want to mm -mm. stumble and trip over my words. He's like, you got it. I'll jump in after. Yeah, was, you did a great job, Greg. Thank you. I was loving myself sick. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> want you. you to stop. But I could see if, like, yeah. if I had let Daniel do it and, like, he tripped over himself, he would go to work the next day with Pacey. He's like, you know what? I don't even care. I messed up the intro <laughs> with Donna. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> care. <laughs> like this is not oh, the low point of my life for some reason i like to do this thing when i when i do trip over my words um i i just give up on everything else and then sideline into a new conversation <laughs> making jokes about the situation i'm in and just having fun like it just turns into a whole yeah. thing i don't now, in other I'm words i don't recover from question. it very well <laughs> no recovery no recovery. Oh, well, I'm glad that you we, you didn't embarrass yourself um, much. <laughs> now, I, I'd like to. I want you to look at me. Do you think I have a speech impediment? I'm going to say the word railroad. Railroad. Ra railroad. No. Do you think my R's are weird? Railroad. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Recently, I did a, a a documentary where I had to say railroad so many times. I was trying to say railroad. <laughs> All right, and I was like, "Do I have a speech?" In <laughs> it's like the rural juror in um, Thirty Rock, or filthy squirrel. That's actually very hard for Japanese to say. Filthy, the filthy squirrel. It, with because they're L's and R's. Oh, filthy squirrel. Okay. Well, that, well, okay. Apparently, I struggle like, saying I it too. Find, yeah, Ryu. They also have this thing in Japanese that I cannot say. Ryu. R Y U Ryu 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 Q Kingdom Ryu nah. Ryu. So See Daniel, now, now I'm going to be I very cautious about my really, words. I get a bit scared about saying some things as well. So, which well, you know what the strange part is is at work when I have to you know, I have to interact with a lot of people I don't know. I, I'm a little scripted when I meet new people, at, especially at work. Uh, in the healthcare setting, yeah, I'm, I'm very scripted. So I'll I'll do this, and then I just kind of wing it from there. But outside of that, there's no script, right? There's no script that I'm used to doing. <laughs> so I just I'm no glad there's sir. a script at work. You don't really walk out. God, you look awful. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? Jeez, you're, gee whiz. Yeah, I walked through the look door. I'm like, out of your life? Thoughts. The, you're <laughs> going to stay way over here today. <laughs> I, oh god yeah so have, yeah oh i'm so go ahead did you did you have something donna no i'm just i'm i realize i'm just g g g gabbing on but there's this book that but jill bolte taylor and she she's a she she was this phd woman who had a stroke and her phd was in strokes right so she's an expert in strokes then she herself has a stroke and loses all ability to speak. Jeez. And it takes her eight years to um, learn learn her, and her whole personality changes and everything. And when she, it's a beautiful book, and when she is in the hospital, like doctors and nurses are coming in, and she had no language, and she could – so people are just like blah, 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 making noises at her, but she could immediately tell who was – had you know a good heart and who didn't by just just not their words just who they were so daniel i'm sure you must be giving people lovely energy when you walk in and they can't speak and they they just feel feel nice a, a nice face well thank you and i do because i'm awesome <laughs> yay everything is awesome everything is cool when you're part of a team I remember watching the Lego movie thinking, this song is so lame. No, but then realizing it was supposed to be lame. It was, yeah. 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 I think, yeah. I guess that was the point. Catchy I liked lame. it. I liked it. Catchy yeah. and lame. Now it's yeah. stuck in my head. Cool. Donna, you have been. So any more questions for me? 
Yeah, so no, I was going to say, good? you've been amazing. I know you're a very, very busy woman. We do not want to take up any more of your of your time. Um, where can all of your fans find you? Non, non, Non-creepy, guys. Don't be creepy. But where can your fans find you to interact with you, see what you're working on? Unless it's a um, big secret just, and you got like um, a contract and you can't tell anyone, but you can tell us. We won't tell anyone. Oh, uh, no. Nothing, nothing. I do have secrets. Um, uh, DonnaBurke.com. I'm on Twitter at uh, the Donna Burke. I'm not really big on Instagram. So Twitter mainly, yeah. YouTube. Actually, I read all the comments. So um, even the ones that are mean, like, this is, why can't she not stay in temple? This is a disaster. Please. That French person, whoever wrote that. Yeah, I read that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when, when I did Metal Gear in concert in Paris, the, 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 the conductor, who's another Aussie, he was like, hey, hey, um, you know, you need to play in time. And this guy stood up and he goes, she is not in time. She is ahead of the, she cannot stay in time. And, and Daniel and <laughs> Nick's like, yeah, she can do whatever she wants, but your job is a drama. You need to stay in time, mate. Yeah, she can, no, don't, don't look at her. And he, this French guy's just like, <laughs> yeah. And oh, it, for comedy gold, you have to watch the, the snake eater from Paris. The Palais de the something, I do not know. But, uh, and at about the two minute mark, there's a viola player who gives you like three evil looks. Like, and then she looks again. It's just comedy gold. Just watch it and have a good laugh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yep, definitely gonna have to look at that. Just pay attention to all the people and instruments in the background. You just, you probably will see. Oh, yeah, no. Everyone's just looking at the thing and then suddenly she's just like, what is she wearing? She looks like total. Russian prostitute. And then it's like, ah, yeah, it's so funny. So, yeah, so read all, I read all the comments on YouTube. So if you want, want to say something. Um, and again, I'm looking forward to making some uh, lovely signatures and um, comments when you buy a Royal Flush from Japan, toiletsound.com. And you've heard it here first. I'm going to be doing the intro next and taking some other poor Australian voice actor work off air and replacing it with myself because that's what I do. I just shit from a great height on other people's work and try and insert myself whenever I can. Yeah. You've been listening to Donna Burke, Daniel and Greg. Yep. I think that's the best outro yeah. ever. Everyone, you've been amazing. Take care of yourself and each other <laughs> and we'll catch all of you on the next podcast. Later. What? <laughs>